last year I was asked to do a stage reading of the Laramie Project uh, for Millersville University Silencing the Hate Week. So I did the Laramie Project and got a huge cast and put it together and it was really successful. We raised money for Silent Witness Peacekeepers. Josh put on a stage reading for Silencing the Hate Week. It was the first Laramie Project. That's the story of Matthew Shepard, um, a gay man who was beat by two uh, offenders, Aaron McKinney and Russell Henderson. Because the stage reading last year was so successful, they decided that because the Laramie Project has a sequel, Laramie Project 10 years later, they wanted to do it and asked me if I would come back and direct the second one. And I was like, yeah, that's great. I was part of the first production. And then when he was planning to do 10 years later, he wanted to get a lot of the original cast back. And so he asked me, and I was all for it. Josh had called me up. He said he's doing this project, this Laramie project, and if I would be interested. And since Josh and I had worked together before at EPAC, I said, sure, sounds like fun. What is special about the Laramie project is that none of the characters are one-dimensional. They're completely rounded because they are actual people. All of the dialogue in the show is real. It wasn't written. It was taken from what people actually said. So in essence, we are playing, the people in the show are playing real characters. So nobody's painted as black or white. It's a very gray area and you get to see everybody's perspective on these issues, which I think is really awesome. Becky pointed out to me that there was a, a little blurb at the very beginning of the script that says the facts. So she's gonna come out and uh, well, the rehearsal process was, I mean, we were doing a staged reading, which is a little significantly different than, you know, a full-blown um, production of it. Uh, thankfully, it didn't require us to memorize our lines, but there was still uh, a certain amount of staging required. It's difficult trying to get 20 people at the same time for a rehearsal, and I know Josh came into this, like, kind of expecting that, but... It was a little difficult sometimes. Even just reading things, um, getting them across in a dramatic way um, is non-trivial. Um, you can't just cold turkey, you know, begin reading and expect it to come out exactly the way it, it really needs to. How have you been changed personally by this? I'm much more courageous now that than I was before, Matthew. In the show, I play four different characters. I play used car salesman, and then I play a very conservative Republican senator who is totally against any kind of alternate lifestyle, and he's pushing a marriage act where marriage is only between man and woman, the way it's been dictated for centuries and through multiple cultures. So. Blaze, Dr. Liffick, is a professor at Millersville University. He is also one of the uh, founders of Silent Witness PA, who last year Laramie raised money for. And his involvement was actually kind of funny. He told me that he was very busy and he could probably only take a little role. And I rambled off some of the names of the smaller roles that he might want to audition for. And one of them was the Reverend Fred, Fred Phelps. I was playing Fred Phelps, who is the villain of... Uh, the entire show, um, and someone who I have, I've not stood directly against him, but uh, against his uh, offspring. So it was a challenge for me to um, take on that persona, even for the short period of time that it was necessary to do so. I, I think the ones that I relate to the most, probably like I had said before, was uh, Lucy Thompson. She was the grandmother uh, of uh, Russell. Henderson. And I, I really feel like because I'm a grandma, you know, I can feel like she must have felt terrible. You know, I mean, she must have been torn. Here she was a Mormon and believing a certain way, raising this, I think she helped raise the boy. And here he was, you know, here he had killed this, this young man. And I, I think she was just torn. And um, I could see where that would be hard. <laughs> as far as Dave O'Malley, the police officer, goes. I guess he went through a lot of personal growth when this happened because when he first encountered this case, he was very much a homophobe. And having to see the reality of this, 
he says so in the play. I remember this line. He says it's a complete 180 um, from how he used to be. And that, that sort of in, intense personal growth is something I can relate to. I've gone through that myself. Well, my favorite to play is not my favorite person. And it was the senator that was very conservative. And I liked him because I, could, I knew what he was about. I grew up with older people like that when I was a kid who were conservative and had set views. So I was playing my grandparents and my great-grandparents and a lot of people I met in my life. Laramie is a very personal project for me because I am gay, but I'm also, I also grew up in a religious family and not everybody that I interact with have the same feelings about the LGBT community that I do. Before um, we even had the Laramie Project brought here, I did not know. I did not know about uh, Matthew Shepard's murder because I was seven when it happened. Like, and with my parents, it's not exactly like, oh no, a gay man was killed. Let's do something about it. This project is personal to me on a lot of levels. Um, I myself am, if you want to put it this way, a member of the LGBT community. I've been an advocate for the LGBT community for quite a number of years uh, before this came up. So for me, this is something that that hits close to home on a lot of levels. For me, uh, it was sort of a validation of the work that I do with Silent Witness Peacekeepers. When people think about Matthew Shepard's murder, it's not a particularly proud moment in the history of the state or the history of the community. People who are obviously older generations obviously straight lifestyles, conservative in their past, I don't know where they are presently, came and really paid attention. And what struck me more is that I was hopefully performing and helping the show give a message. A very important aspect of it is increasing understanding um, just of other people, whether you agree or not. And I guess that's something that I really tried to convey especially through the character of Aaron McKinney. So what happened next? Uh, I took the gun by the barrel, so I was holding it, you know, like a bat, and I just beat him in the head with it. Okay. Yeah. Then he made a real weird noise and, like, slumped over. You know, like they say people make a noise when they give up the ghost. But he didn't give up the ghost. He held on for six more days. Yeah. Gosh, if you can understand him, then you've really got compassion down. Um, but it's not even just that, especially for people who are a part of the LGBT community or know somebody who is or are emotionally connected to it for whatever reason. I feel like it sends that feeling of hope. And I really hope that... Uh, I was able to get that across in some way. Lancaster County, maybe I should say more like the Millersville area, it's kind of like this Bible Belt and we're kind of dead center. What struck me more is it wasn't just a special interest kind of audience. You would think, okay, everybody that's in favor of gay or alternate lifestyles are going to show up here and they're all going to be like, yeah, this is great, and yeah, I agree with that, and yeah, rah, 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 and solidarity. But what struck me more was people who are obviously older generations, obviously straight lifestyles, conservative in their past, I don't know where they are presently, came and really paid attention. <laughs> You know, Laramie has changed me a lot. Uh, before, it was kind of like I never had any ill feelings or anything toward uh, anybody of any other sex, any anything like that. And I think it really made me feel closer to them uh, in that, the you know, we can't be so intolerant of people. we got to let them have their their own thing, their freedom. I think this is something that's happened for me throughout working on both of the plays. That being, I've just sort of 
kind of come to better understand the reality of this, both the dark side of it, that this kind of stuff does happen, but also the hopeful side of it, that people do respond to it more often than not in the way they need to. One of the, th the important messages of, of these plays is that we all have a responsibility to be diligent about uh, issues related to bullying, uh, issues related to um, uh, intimidation, um, discrimination, and um, in general uh, behavior toward the LGBT community that is counterproductive. In phase one, two, three. Touch Touch in I like the people that were in this show. They've become my friends. I admire them too as actors and I learn a lot from them. Um, even though a lot of them are obviously younger than I am, they have been around longer in theater. And I learn a lot from them in life. I love working with all the kids that were here. Um, they just treated me like, you know, like I wasn't 64 years old, you know, they treated me like a kid. And uh, they, they were wonderful, they were wonderful. Everyone talked to everyone. Um, we all love each other, it's awesome. So <laughs> I really enjoyed like work, being able to work with everyone, as many people as I did. We've become friends and I've learned a lot and I've opened up a lot and grown. And being in this was just a continuation of that process. So the rehearsal process was good. It was like coming home to mom's house and it was nice times. If it took two or three hours, it didn't feel like two or three hours. It felt like, yeah, I went somewhere I wanted to be. All right, I'm really, really, really proud of everybody and all the work they're putting in.